This is Miss Coventry, and today I want to talk to you about a database that we subscribe to called ProQuest Historical Newspapers. I'm currently finding ProQuest Historical Newspapers through uh, the research libguide for a 10th grade project on the interwar years. You'll notice that I've scrolled down just a little bit on that particular libguide, and there's a listing here of various history databases. And the one we're going to look at today is this one, the second one in called Historical Newspapers. Sometimes it will be just listed as ProQuest Historical Newspapers. So when I click on that, it's going to take me to a login page. And in order for me to find that login, I'm going to jump back to the LibGuide. And while we're in this hybrid school year, you will notice that a link for library passwords is always included in these research guides. So that would open up a Google Doc, the Google Docs right here, and I can find the username and password for many of the resources that the school has access to. So now that I know the username and password, I am not going to put in my school institution. I'm going to put in the username and password and I'm going to log in. So ProQuest Historical Newspapers provides me with the Chicago Tribune, the Los Angeles Times, the New York Times, the Washington Post, and the Wall Street Journal. And I uh, can go pretty far back with these uh, journals um, and everything up until the last five years. So I am doing my project on plastic surgery. So I am typing in plastic surgery into the search bar and I'm getting 65,307 results, which is less than I would get if I looked for plastic surgery on Google, but more than I actually want to search through. One of the things I can do is I can sort by oldest first. So maybe that will give me a better chance to find something from the right time. However, this takes me all the way back to 1854. That is before World War I, and I am looking for information about the time between the two wars. Um, so that is too early. So what I'm going to do is add a couple of limiters using the information on this left side. First, I'm going to limit it to full text. Um, that takes a few of them away, not very many. And then I'm going to change my publication dates. So I'm gonna move this publication date up to 1910 to 1919, because of course the war ends in 1918. And I'm gonna move this slider down to um, about, I'm gonna start with 1930 to 1939. I can always reduce it more if I want to. So now I'm gonna update that resource. And now I have 1,758 results, still by oldest first. Um, and again, that is maybe more than I actually want to look at. Um, but at least I can start to narrow it from here. The first thing I want to say when I am just taking a brief look here is that when I see something like this that says display ad 14, no title, a lot of times these could be useful resources, but they tend to be a little overwhelming when you're taking a look at them. So if you can find something that actually looks like it's going to be relevant to your topic, you may want to choose that instead. What I'm also noticing, because um, my first narrowing went by decades, when it says oldest first, it's actually giving me all the way to 1910, and that's still earlier than I want. So I'm going to move my arrow again until I get to 1918, and I'm going to move this arrow down to about 1932, because then I'm safely within my interwar years period. And now I'm going to update information again. Now I only have 600 and 12 results, which actually feels um, a lot better. So I'm going to um, click on one of these. Notice I was able to just quickly browse and I haven't gone past the first page at all. So I'm going to take a look at um, the sculptor's art and surgery, a branch of war medicine that we must consider in our turn. And when I take a look at this resource, 
I can actually see the entire article, and this is a primary source because it was written in July of 1918, so that is the time period of which I am researching, um, and it is news from the time, and so it looks like that's a nice size article that I might really be interested in exploring. In addition, what I'm seeing on the side here are related items that I might want to take a look at. Miracles of surgery on men mutilated in war. Um, education in plastic surgery. Are we headed in the right direction? Now, some of these are from 2012, 2011, 2014. Um, those may not be as relevant to what I'm looking for because of how recent they are. However, if I want to think about sort of the evolution of plastic surgery, those might be something that I would want to take a look at a little bit further on. So here I can see the article, I can read the article, I can download the PDF as it is. When I look at the tabs, I also see that there's a page view PDF that allows me to take a look at what the article looks like in relation to the rest of the page from the New York Times of that day. So if we look at that, then we see the entire page of the newspaper. Um, and one of the things that that could be helpful for is you could get a sense of what else was happening, what else was getting reported on that day in the world at the time um, to get a sense of the bigger picture of the experience and the mood of the time. And again, that's one of the great things about looking at a primary source as opposed to just hearing what other people are saying about the primary source. So I've decided I want to use this resource and I am going to actually take this image of myself and move it down just a little bit. Um, because if I click the details section of this, I will see all of the pieces that I need for the tab that show me all of the pieces I would need to cite this resource. Um, however, um, what I want, instead of doing it this way, is I want you know the easy way. So I'm gonna look under cite here and I'm given a work cited. I want to make sure that I switch it to Chicago in 17th edition notes and bibliography. Um, and here is the information uh, that I would need. And it looks like it's pretty good. And I can actually export it right into Noodle Tools. So that's great because that's exactly what I want. I'm going to click continue. And it's going to open up a new window in Noodle Tools that shows me what this should look like. Now, I can already tell you that there are a couple of things about this that are not accurate. Um, first of all, the title, as you can see right here, is in all caps, as is the author's name. And within Noodle Tools, you don't want those two things. So I am going to have to do a little bit of editing when I um, get back into Noodle Tools. The other thing is that because New York is such a well-known city, I'm actually gonna wanna change this a little bit and just take out that city. However, I like the way this looks. I'm uh, going to import the reference. And now it's been imported into my source list. And if I update my source list here, I should be able to see M. Allen Star. And it's, of course, going to be listed under M, which is not where I want it to be. So there are some corrections that I will need to make. So I'm looking at my source list. And when I find Mr. M, as he is being listed here, here he is. I'm going to go to my options and edit. And the database information is in, which is great, but they've taken the whole name and they've put it in here. So of course, I'm gonna want it to be M and then Allen and then star. And then notice, even when I look at it here, it's yelling at me. So I'm gonna hit the caution button and the caution button is telling me that to be sure I'm not capitalizing entire words. And so I am going to want to change that and then I can again delete the New York from the publication city. They've also put all of the date in this last 
piece. And so I see that it's July 3rd, so I can change the date and I would say save. Now um, my citation is up to date and I'm still within that system. So if I got a note from my teacher, I would still know how to update that any uh, more carefully. And now it's going to be listed under star. So here it is highlighted and I can add a tag to it so that I know it's a primary source and it will show up as a P. So I'm totally aware that it's a primary source and I can start creating new note cards specific to this resource. In addition, if I want to return to it, I can just click the view live web page and it will take me back to it. So I hope that this information about the historical newspapers resource is helpful to you. Again, I highly encourage you when you go back to those results to use the information on the left that helps you narrow pieces down. Again, if you have questions, comments, or um, need any other assistance, feel free to contact me via chat, via email, via Zoom. I, like all of the librarians here at Wheeler, are here to assist you. Have a great day.